Hello and welcome to this video on brewing a better coffee. Oh, While well, the idea of brewing better coffee uh, might sound pretentious, and to some extent it is, the concept is not wrong. That's because we are relying on new research into how to make your coffee better, and to a certain extent why some things are particularly important. It's not something you're likely to be particularly mindful of for everyday drinking, particularly if it's just an average cup of coffee that you're after. But if that average cup of brew is only for functioning and allowing you to grind away as a drone, it's nothing special. But for a surprise, such as a nice cup of coffee for a guest or a lazy weekend morning, it could be useful. The first point we'll make is about the beans you use. Not the obscure imported beans grown under stringent conditions with ideal soil, rainfall, and, and so on that are hand-picked and stored in organic woven sacks of purest wishes and dreams. No, start simple. Just get yourself fresh beans, but keep them cold. Practically frozen is best. So with that in mind, keep them stored in the freezer. Before you do that though, make sure to break your coffee beans down into smaller batches so that you can pull out about 100 grams at a time, or thereabouts. It's enough to make a day's worth of coffee, but not any more. This is because of two issues. The time you leave beans out or exposed to the air, even when kept in the packaging and in a cool place, will lead to oxidization. This means that they will go bad, not necessarily as bad as they could, but they will go bad. The second is go for freshly roasted beans when possible, but know that you need to make the aforementioned changes even if they are freshly roasted, assuming you're not buying 100 grams each day to use. This should leave you with fresh, best whole beans. These beans will now be used to produce better coffee grounds for extracting flavour. Of course, none of this should in general terms be news to anyone who has a, a particular interest in making coffee, but for those who aren't as versed, it's helpful information. Now for the trick to grinding your coffee beans. Grinding beans into grounds for extracting the black gold that is coffee is more than just putting it through a hand mechanical electric grinder. And to be clear, any of these devices work perfectly well, but you need to take other steps to get the most out of the beans themselves and therefore the best grounds. The first is that you want to keep your equipment cold. This is easier done with a small handheld grinder, but it will make little difference as time goes on. That's because as you, you use the device, whether it's electronic, mechanical, or a hand mill, it will gradually warm up. Arguably, a hand mill is somewhat slower, but it doesn't make much difference as said. But we come to the other side, and it's the reason to keep your coffee beans in the freezer. It ensures the beans are cold. Well, strictly speaking, they're frozen, but... The difference is relatively immaterial when we look at what's actually happening here. What you do is you spray these frozen beans with a small amount of water, or you apply a small amount of the beans as they go into the grinder. This is important, or at least according to recent research it's important. The water that you're adding will reduce the clumping effect of static on the surface of the ground beans. This reduction in static charge means the grounds are more dispersed. That dispersion creates more surface area. That surface area is key to what happens next and both getting maximum flavour out of the beans and avoiding burning them. Burning them will lead to harsh and unpleasant flavours and if they're too clumped together, you won't extract the flavour as it will get caught in the mass or the puck within the coffee itself. The water itself, before you even get to the actual flavours, can be a rather important consideration as well. And that's because it will influence what tastes you get out of the coffee beans. It might sound weird and wonderful, but true nonetheless. Broadly speaking, the higher the bicarbonate levels within water, the worse your coffee taste will be. Whereas if you have higher metals, like say iron, magnesium and similar, it's going to somewhat improve the flavour, as these are are more capable of drawing out the desired flavours within the bean, or at least the grounds of the bean. The other consideration is that, although carbonate levels are bad, a hard water itself can be somewhat useful when used correctly. And this is a important caveat. Hard water works well if you're talking about beans that have a lighter flavour. 
and that's because hard water travels more slowly through the bean. This means it pulls out more of the flavour. A darker roast will have a stronger flavour, therefore a slower passage through it will pull out even more flavour again. As such, either adjusting the degree of grind, the amount of bean used, or in some cases just how long you brew your coffee for, it can be important to achieve a, a better balance between extraction, extraction time, and well, ultimately flavour. Finally, we have how you extract the coffee itself, and this is, as mentioned, a significant factor already, it's simply due to the extraction time, but the actual overall method is key here to what we're talking about now, and it shouldn't be surprising again, or at least we hope so. Generally speaking, for strongly flavoured and very caffeinated coffee, go for a slower extraction, something like a French press. This is key, as the slower the extraction is, the more likely you are to extract all the caffeine and flavours you can. But if it's too slow, you're going to get some of the more harsh and aggressive flavours, so you have to find your own middle ground in that. If you just want the strong flavour, using a pour over is a good option. It tends to be somewhat less caffeinated, but has a strong flavour to it nonetheless mostly down to the kind of grind that is used, and to a lesser extent, the heat of the water. This overall is how you can improve your coffee making experience. Certainly nothing here should be a big change, or especially difficult, but it can make things just a little bit better. And depending on how seriously you take your coffee, that little bit may be a huge step for you. In other cases, it may just be a small step that adds a few seconds to the routine, but yields a better coffee. It's a trade-off you might want to consider, not necessarily go for if you aren't so inclined, but it is an option nonetheless. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please do post any comments, questions, or suggestions you have below.